for it, bro. Bro. I been new. I been new. But it's all good. It's all good. She still loses this matchup? I agree. I think so. Um, and I actually want to talk about that. You had no idea Cormac's that good at juggling? It's it's like um she is, but she isn't. Uh there's a few things, like a few characters that can make I always just refer to Corin as she because I I just don't see male Corins. Like I don't. I I don't know, it's strange. Um the heck, new tab. What are we about to go see? Um yeah, but there's a few things that I noticed when I was watching yesterday, I was like, Oh, you're definitely unfamiliar with uh You're definitely a little unfamiliar with Corin. Baleo also does a lot of things that most Corins wouldn't do in a lot of situations. So like kind of like it's because he's so good as a player. He's like not looking at the situation for what it is. He's more so looking at like maybe like two steps down the road of what what he wants to end up doing. So it's pretty interesting. Um, but I'm going to start this. Um, first things first. The reason that this matchup is kind of hard for Corrin is because uh, the same reason that most of Corrin's matchups can be a little difficult, and it's that, yes, she's like uh, a little slower, and it's normally like poses to be an issue against a lot of characters, but if the character doesn't have that much range and they kind of like have to interact with her, then it can get a little difficult for them to like continuously like like fox for example continues to like out mobility her and i think a lot of people think that like fox scoring is like absolutely awful but i i don't personally think it's that bad um but i i haven't played it like extensively so i don't know but usually what happens is like she'll play against like a character like fox or like a uh, sheik is pretty rough because sheik has like projectiles but it's a character that can just out mobility her and like whiff punish her and then put her in like awful awful situations um or she runs into a character that is faster than her but also has more range than her normally the rate that she makes up with like her slow speed is that she'll like compensate through um through like the range of her sword where like you you essentially have to kind of bridge a gap that you can't it's like kind of invisible it's like an invisible gap like you can see it through the sword but when you're playing you don't really think about hitting through the sword you think about hitting the player which is why like i also think that cloud's really strong because people can't see the space between cloud and then the sword and then them they just see the space between them and cloud so they, they get hit a lot um And because she has that range against a lot of characters, um, she can afford to play a little more defensive and like the speed that they have is just compensated by the range that she has. So a lot of times you'll play as Corrin and you'll be like, oh, okay, like, yeah, sure. They're like a little faster than me, but they have to get a little bit, they have to be a little unsafe with how close they need to get. With Cloud, um, he has more range and he's faster. So there's a lot of situations where you kind of have to aggress in very strange ways just to get th through the range range and speed difference. Um, Spargo normally is really good at conditioning people through like hitting their their shield and like hitting like empty aerials of space. Like he'll like do like a retreating back air that he knows probably won't hit. But it's like just conditioning through like using those options to make you think that, oh, okay, well, if he's going to do this like retreating back air when he jumps, then I need to move forward a little bit more. And then he decides that he wants to move forward, right? And then you get hit because you're thinking about like the past of, oh, I need to move forward a little bit. And then he's just like, boop, and he like goes in and hits you. Um, So we'll, we'll watch it. We'll watch it. And I'll like pause through different points and like talk about... Leo's advantage state, how he plays disadvantage in a lot of situations. There were some unfortunate things that happened to Spargo. And he, to me, felt like he was playing kind of uncharacteristically antsy. Um, 
It's the weirdest song. Um, in the sense that he like wanted to close out stocks a lot, but we'll talk about it when we get there. Like, um, one thing I noticed about Leo's Corin is at low percents, if he lands a down tilt, down tilt is actually negative one hit at low percents. Um, you you can't get follow ups and or like at zero at like five or ten you can get like certain follow-ups depending on character but a lot of times he'll like land a down tilt and he'll like he somehow makes the situation feel like it's in his favor now i don't know if spargo knows that you can't get anything at at down tilt or off of down tilt at this percent so it's a little interesting to see it like how often he gets away with it another thing i load noticing you'll see it later in the game is that Forward air can lead to a lot of different things. It can lead to, at, at like really low percents, like zero. It can lead to pin, it can lead to grab, it can lead to forward tilt, it can lead to down tilt. Um, Leo opts not to go for pin, which is the most damaging a lot. He usually goes for like F tilt, grab or something like that. So it's really, it's really interesting to see. See, like that's not a true combo. It, it, it starts comboing later, but a lot of times he like starts to get punished and it looks like Spargo's really comfortable until he gets hit like that's what i noticed like he looked really uncomfortable in the positions that corn was putting him in because he's not used to having to act another thing that leo does better than most corns that i've watched is he uses forward throw a lot of corns do down throw like myself included i love to do down throw when i get a grab it does the most damage um along with up throw they both do 11 percent but a lot of times he'll just forward throw and i i was actually on my stream the other day i was doing forward throw or maybe it was off stream i was doing forward throw from across stage because i was like wait a second this sets up like them having to tech on a platform now i don't know if that's on all di's and i was in training room so it was really hard for me to know um but he puts you on plat and then with forward throw and then that's how he gets a lot of his offense started so not only do you have to worry about like the neutral tools of like forward air and getting hit by down tilt when he grabs you if he puts you on a platform then you have to start worrying about oh no i'm about to get tech chase and then i get hit by up air and then you're in the air against corin corin's really strong at juggling characters that are floaty and don't have really good aerial mobility the two of those combinations are really good um when you're corin Another thing that you you'll notice like right here is Corin does not have very good out of shield options behind her. Uh there's not a lot of characters in the game that have like very very good out of shield options behind her and this is something you need to abuse when you like start getting better at the game like Fox, you can you can't hit the front of Fox's shield but you can definitely hit the back of Fox's shield. Who cares? Unless like, you know, you're getting parry up tilted. Um if they don't parry it like it's you are in a very good position. Corn's the same way. Her nair starts in front of her, not behind her. So it, it takes a while for the nair hitbox to get behind. So you'll notice a lot of times when Spargo's hitting the back of Leo's shield or when Spargo's behind him, Leo's choosing a defensive option, right? So it's like, boom, spot dodge. I don't want to be in this position. And now I rolled out, right? But we got behind him again. So he's, he's shielding again. He's like, man, this 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 sucks. I really don't have an option here, like a good option here. So he goes for a roll again and Spargo covers it. So it's just good to know things like that when you're playing. Leo also doesn't, it, I don't know if it's this matchup, but a lot of times when he lands down tilt at mid percents, he goes for like that back air instead of going for just the down tilt up, up air, like true combo, cause it is a true combo. And that's this situation. I'm going to be pausing a lot because I, I think there's a lot to talk about. And I, I just like talking about the game. Um, this situation is definitely a lack of character knowledge because Corrin's Nair is obscenely safe. But also, a lot of people don't know that Corrin low profiles when um, she lands. And like her box shifting in this game can be really weird. So it seemed like this would be a punish, but in actuality, like. You know and i think a lot of times spargo was actually going for a lot of up smashes you'll see later he's going for a lot of up smashes in situations where if he just like did up b and um tried to cash out on like an advantage state instead of going for like hard punishes in a lot of situations he could have he could have done better um 
But I think the reason that he wasn't doing it is because Leo was getting out of a lot of his uh, up Bs, which led to him getting like hard punished. But we'll get, we'll get to that as well. Punish the landing. And again, you'll see Leo default. Now, the good thing about this is um, you'll see Leo like default to a defensive option when Spar goes behind him, right? Like again, we shield and we're like, oh man. Now, one time he did spot dodge, then he did roll in and then he did roll in again and he got forward aired. Um, so at this point, he's like, all right, you're on to that. So I'm just going to go for a jump instead, right? And he got away, which is good. Realistically, if Spargo, like, Spargo would have to, like, be way, way, it, like, far in his head in order to know that he was going to jump there. Because it just, it doesn't, didn't make sense based on, like, past interactions. <clears throat> and once you get, like, one hit as Corrin, you can get a lot going. Like, that's a lot of damage, and the position's just really good. Ow. Corrin doesn't have great aerial mobility, so it's actually pretty easy to shark her. And that was an insane counter by Leo. Just to know, like, you're going to keep going for the pressure. It's a free grab. And again, forward throw. And you see Corrin got frame trapped because of her bad, like, aerial stats. Like, even though he air dodged out of the way, it didn't matter. Because stats in the air aren't that bad. Boom. And now we do down throw, which is really interesting. I wonder what made that change. It looks like... He just had it in his mind. He wanted to KO with up air. Corrin's one of the few characters in the game that have, like, an obscene amount of frame traps. Like, sometimes you think you're doing the right thing, but it's it's just... You have to, like, figure out what's what's the better hit to take a lot against Corrin. And, like, look at the position you get off of, like... Boom, like a straight up air. They landed on the platform. We land this forward air. And then you get another forward air up air. Like you just took 39 and you ha almost pretty much have to jump because the immediate position afterwards not in your favor. And the patience that Leo has in the corner is like probably one of the biggest things that changed the matchup. Because um, with, with Byleth a lot of times, it felt like he was like rushing out of the corner where he would like to do like roll or or like a nair or something like some some form of like forward movement to get out of the corner but it, like with corn he's doing like a ton of like crouches just hold shield like then he decides to jump but he's again the roll comes out but it's like a few things beforehand so you're like thinking a lot more about so many different layers of what he can do oh and one huge thing that corn can do in this matchup which is really good that a lot of characters can't do is you can whiff punish cloud's back air which is like in insanely good and a really good jump read on spargo's part leo had zero options so as soon as that nair landed the game was over spargo just had to close it out and choose the correct option again like here i would have down thrown 100 percent, especially because i don't think you land on the platform now i don't know um but i would have down thrown for the position but it looks like leo likes this angle a lot more and i'm actually curious why i like want to watch it maybe he just wanted the corner pressure i'm not really sure but he, he definitely like prefers for throw maybe he's not like 100 percent sure like when it leads to a tech chase or not and both of these characters like advantage monsters like look at this like we hit we we got one hit and just we can carry it pretty far. Of course, there's that down air again. And frame trap, you can't do anything. Like, if you don't fall fast enough, oh, that was a misinput. If you don't fall fast enough, like, Corrin can swing up air, and the range is just so much that you have to choose. Like, if you don't choose anything, you, you just get hit. So you, like, start burning resources, and that's one thing that Corrin does very, very well. Um... Or if you don't have high enough aerial mobility. Again, there's that four throw. And look at this that we get set up. Boom. Oh. Now, we're going to have a hard time landing. But Spargo, like, barely. It was actually a really good stall. It was actually a really good stall with uh, this back air. Because that up air definitely would have landed. And we still would have been getting juggled by Limit Cloud. Back throw. Nice. 
I would expect four throw there just because Cloud has limit. And it's going to be a lot harder to deal with him landing just because the stats that he has and it gives him like much higher aerial mobility. Four throw would have like either made him burn limit or put him in like a really awkward situation. So it's an interesting down throw. I'm curious why he went for it. Like what ends up happening? Okay. <laughs> he got frame trapped. I think he's just really confident in the vertical juggling capabilities that um, Korn has. He also may have been aware that limit was about to end and he's trying to punish these like forward airs but forward airs only like a perfect forward air now mind you this is like a perfect like full hop unstale forward air is like minus four on shield so some of these might be like minus seven minus eight depending on like how high he's doing them and you know short hop multiplier and this how stale the move is but still that's not um that's not up smashable it's up beable but it's not up smashable just to point it out one more time you can actually see like he's so when when someone's behind him even if he's not like in shield he's so like defensive happy that he like instantly buffers the spot dodge here like look at every time corn hits you look at how corn is burning a resource immediately like immediately it's like forward air and then it's like oh snap i gotta jump <laughs> it's like I, I can't land into this character i have to jump or forward air oh snap i gotta air dodge like like immediately resources burn which is why part of what i think makes corn so strong resource burned again now What's interesting about Leo's Korn's ledge trapping is it actually almost all of it just starts from doing like short hop forward air. It's really strange, but I kind of like the idea of it because if they do like, like it conditions timing pretty well. And if they do happen to like neutral get up into it or like jump at a good timing for it, then it, you just get forward air back air or whatever and you die. Interesting thing. This is very, very, very similar and I think people will start reacting to getting kicked instead of just DIing for the pit, uh, for the kick. This is very similar to what Isam used to do, where Isam would jab you on a uh, jab lock and do dash away, turn around, up smash, like start charging it because people were DIing for like the forward smash or the dash attack, whatever. So they were already holding in. The same thing is what's happening with uh, Corrin. I do this all the time too. like to the point now that like i'll do pin drop through and just do turn around neutral b depending on how far their tech roll goes because people are di'ing for the kick already so they're already holding in so leo knows this and he, like he'll just do like turn around grab or something which is a lot more safe this forward throw is also interesting because at this percent you would think that he would go for like a back throw and then try to cash out on like a ledge trap or like maybe burn it, get him to burn, jump, double jump early and try and make him land on stage. But he actually just forward throws, which is again, like very strange to me. Good whiff punish. Pin's not that strong in this game, but, or like non tipper pin isn't that strong, but it's still like a really good whiff punish tool. I think people like want it to be like an everything button like it was before, but that's not what it's used for now. And then, Look at the conditioning. Look at the conditioning, right? <clears throat> um, this is the last pin. This one, right? Okay, so we whiff punished with pin. Didn't kill. Oh man, dang, that sucks. Okay, and pin again, right? And now. Spargo puts himself in a bad position because the dragon fang shot uh, forced a jump and he decided to hold in instead of going to ledge because ledge is also a bad position. And he's like, oh, snap. Like, this is not a good position for me. I died to pin here. And Leo's like, I know you died to pin, so you're probably going to shield. And he knew that up throw killed. So it's like really good conditioning just from getting pinned. And that's another thing that... Um, Corrin used to do a lot in Smash 4 is they pin so much that a lot of times if they did like a jump in or if they did a dash in 
they would just grab you because you're so focused on getting pinned that you're just like i'll just take the grab like nothing bad comes from grab right like it's some it's some percent like it's position but if i get pinned oh no it's too much damage or i like die or something like that trying to upbeat something that couldn't be upbeat Remember what I said earlier about it being minus four? I'm pretty sure Cloud's up is like frame seven or eight or something like that. I'm pretty sure it's seven. Um, but because it's minus four, he gets his shield off. If Leo had gone for um, a falling up air, that's I'm pretty sure that's how you get the most damage that you can as the punish. But he went for like a, a Nair. And because he wasn't already going forward with the Nair, he was going kind of backward. He actually couldn't get, like, a, a good, uh... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I looked at the percents wrong. He's already at 17. Falling forward air was definitely the best punish he could have done. Um, but because he was going backward instead of forward with the Nair, he doesn't get a follow-up off of it. Because Spargo just DIs out. Boom. Look at that with punish. And that's one other thing. Corn makes you second-guess yourself a lot. Like, normally, um, and I think that's another reason that uh, Leo's doing really well in this is because the corner pressure is actually not as strong because a lot of times, like, he'll want to, like, jump out of the corner. But with Corrin, you can actually kind of just stand there and, like, play the, the game because mobility isn't a factor anymore. Like, remember how I said a huge problem with Corrin is, like, she's not that mobile well, when you're in the corner, like, all you have to do is worry about um, them coming to you or, like, slightly moving forward slowly. So, as long as you're not, like, pressing anything and just getting whiff punished, you're chilling. So, Cloud putting you in the corner actually isn't that big of a deal. A lot of times, uh, if you were to try to jump out of a corner with a Nair with Byleth, then he would get cross slashed there. But instead, he could just stand there. So, he just waited and saw a cross slash and was like, okay, I'm with punishing you for it. Now, getting down is hard. And you've seen a lot of damage that Spargo gets it comes from, like, vertical advantage and, like, Leo putting himself in some pretty rough positions that Cloud forces him into. A lot of, like, running in and, like, it's interesting how he uses roll in as an option. Good tomahawks just because you're so threatened by like falling up air like he uses falling up air so much and he also i like leo's like counter usage he uses it just enough to keep you honest right like he uses it enough to be like hey i need you to remember that i have this counter so you can't just like keep pressing buttons in like situations where you're in advantage like sometimes you're gonna have to take a break and wait and see what i do and that just gives me enough time to get out of the situation so i really love how how well he uses counter Boom. And again, the reason he's doing that is because it forces a, a resource. You're so far away that you either have to jump or air dodge. And it can force you low or just, you know, force force a jump. And if you get hit by it, you can die. Boom, up tilt. Nice. He's trying to land with an aggressive button because, like, it's, it's frustrating. Like, low-key playing against corn... I have uh, someone at my local, when I first started picking up corn, um, we played like four times, like in like four locals. It was really strange. And on the fifth time that we played, he was like, I don't, I'm tired of corn. Like, tell me you're not going corn. I was like, no, I'm actually playing Min Min today. And he was like, thank you. I would rather fight Min Min than, than fight corn. Like low key, sometimes fighting corn can be really 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 frustrating because you just get put in these stupid positions and it's like bro what in the world like why did i just take all that damage or potentially die because i got hit with a rising up air where he landed on the platform now i have to jump up oh, now i got hit by the up air i'm not doing down air because my uh up air just got beat by down air right so now i'm like i'm frustrated i'm just gonna do down air anyway Boom, and I get hit by up air, and it's like, now I'm on the platform. Like, I'm getting tech chase on the platform because I got hit by a rising up air at zero. Like, I just took this much percent off of one neutral interaction. It's, it's like, insane 
look at that forces a jump again like and this was just unfortunate he didn't know that he used his jump he wants that big damage combo starter and that is a reason remember how i mentioned earlier that he doesn't doesn't want to up b too much this is the huge reason why um characters like corin who can fall out of up b and land on you with an aerial to start big damage is rough it's rough like Floria characters can't really do it because he can shield in time, but Corrin can just get there just in time um, to, like, get big damage. Like, even at zero, you could do, like, here you could do forward air pin or you could do forward air grab. I talked about all those earlier. He likes for forward air down tilt, which is really, really, really strange to me again because you see how he shields. Like, he knows he's negative on hit, so he's, like, choosing a defensive option. So I find it weird where he doesn't go for like forward air grab or like forward air pin or forward air not down tilt, but I, I guess it's working out for him. And that's one thing that not a lot of Corrin's do. They don't use up smash. And actually this is the only time I think that you see him use up smash, but it's still an option. Um, and you can actually see that killed a decent percent. like. He got a slight charge, but 115 on Cloud is actually a pretty decent, like, middle of the stage, pretty decent way to kill. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like he, like, barely died. Like, he exploded off the top of the screen. So, definitely, let's go Black Twins. We should definitely look into using some, uh, some up smash when the situations call for it. Like, Leo, Leo's going for, like, consistency, right? Like, he's not going for, like down tail air dodge read i'm charging neutral b you know he's not going for like crazy stuff like that he's just going for consistent like advantage state and like continuously put in uh spark on like bat positions over and over again and again like this time he does for uh fair four tilt which isn't like bad um but i would expect like fair grab into four throw or something like that oh no that sucks that he didn't get the tech chase but like, it's just so powerful how Corrin can sometimes hit you, and then it's like, okay, well, GG's. Force a resource, chose the wrong option, well, GG's. Like, boom. Again, like, it's so strange. Okay, this forward throw, I don't really get, because I don't think Corrin can get there fast enough. Let's go to Celadon. I don't think Corrin can get there fast enough if he just does um, does neutral tech. I think you, you just get up, and the situation's over. So... I, I think Leo's throw choices are really strange to me, and some of his follow-up choices are strange, but they're, like, really... I don't know. They're, they're good? I don't know how... I, I don't know. Like, some part of me feels like... And that's what's crazy. You know, it's, like, starting to take Corrin more seriously. So, he's gonna get even better than this. Like, he's gonna be more optimized. Again, look how crazy this is, right? Like... If you don't air dodge or jump, you just get hit and you die. So you have to you have to air dodge. And if like you're a floatier character or you have a slower air dodge or your air drift isn't that good, you can do like air dodge runoff pin and you just get you just smoke them. Or if, and if they double jump, then you can just start to position yourself for like their double jump options. Oh, boom! Look at that damage. Okay, this this was low key a mistake from Leo, but I like the greed. I like going for the greed sometimes. Um, Corrin always forces a resource out of you. So going for that double jump up air was a little greedy. I think he thought maybe he would like just instantly buffer a down air because he has been doing that sometimes. So he did lose out on the position, but it's not that big of a deal. I think it's justified. I mean, again, the pin, they're already holding to DI for the kick. So a lot of people just turn around. It might have just been an error. I didn't notice Leo taunted there. That's crazy. Low key, when he taunted, he woke up Sparga. But Spargo kind of started cooking. Boom. Like, I don't know. Is it because he jumped first? No, he didn't jump first. I think you might have to do a forward facing up air. If, the, if they're going to neutral tech, if you think they're going to neutral tech, I think you have to do a forward-facing up air. 
but if you think they're gonna tech other ways you can get back air which is like or back hit a back air, or blah, back hit of up air which is like better for follow-ups but i think i would just not greet it and just go for like forward hit of up air and just take like the situation afterward because it was working a lot more earlier when he was doing different forms of text but now that he's doing like neutral tech it's not cooking him as much Mobility doesn't matter as much with Corrin in the corner unless you try to move forward. Um, if you, like, try to move forward fast, then you're probably going to get smoked. But if you, like, try to slowly move forward where you can, like, like if you walk or something like that, where you have more of your options, then it's all good. If that pin landed, he would have died. That's crazy. Boom. And it forced an option. It sucks that missed. And this up air is a little different than the one I said was like a mistake before because uh, if he air dodged, he, he was actually at a little higher position and he was slightly more to the left. Um, like he was slightly more to the left. Hold on. Can you see my mouse? Can y'all see my mouse? Like, I think y'all can. So before uh, Spargo was like here and Leo was like here. So the up air, if he air dodged in, air, uh, Corrin's aerial speed wouldn't be enough to let him cover whatever option he did, right? Because he would have been here and the Corrin would have probably been like here-ish. Um, but because he's here and Spargo's here, if he goes for the double jump up air and Spargo decides to drift in, he can still cover whatever option that he decides to do if he air dodges. And if he air dodges and goes out he can still cover whatever option he decides to do so going for double jump up air when you're in this position um is actually really good because it'll force out um uh, a double jump and if they don't do the double jump then it's fine because you can cover whatever option that they do low key leo started bringing out everything that he saved like read wise the entire set like he's like i know you're gonna land there boom i'm going for forward smash and it actually started to allow spargo to kind of get back in the game which i mean it's fine you're, you're up a lot like it's whatever as long as you don't like take that energy into like deep into the next stock it's all good like we're going for like hard hard call outs on uh jumping like look at that like oh i know you're gonna jump here here's up air boom Good whiff punish, like good landing punish. And there, there is where Le Leo's like, wait a second, I might win this because, or not, I might win this, like I'm guaranteed to win. Cause he's so, like you could, the language of Spargo is saying that like, I'm actually kinda, I'm kinda shook. Like I don't wanna die. So I'm choosing to more and more defensive options. Like I'm going to play way more defensively. Look at that. Like he like held shield into roll into shield. And Leo knew that. So he just started going for like wild stuff. Like, wild stuff. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's Leo Spargo. I mean